Are you a freelancer or a small business using Notion? In this video, I will show you how you can use Notion and Integrama to build a template that will allow you to automatically send invoices to your client in less than one minute. Okay, so the first step is to, well, uh, start by creating Notion templates. So it's going to be very simple. Uh, what we're going to do is that we're going to have two pages, so two databases that are going to be linked uh, with each other. Uh, one database for the clients and then another one um, for the invoices. So the, the databases are going to be very basic. We're just going to add uh, well, the necessary information we need uh, to send invoices. So this template was created with uh, freelance invoices in, in mind because I'm a freelancer and that's why I use to send my invoices. But uh, feel free to customize the template um, for a small business or for anything else you need. Uh, that's the beauty of Notion. It's very customizable and you can pretty much do whatever you want with this. So uh, what we're going to do is we're going to add all of the fields we need. So the email, the address, the tax number and so on and so forth. And then we're going to go ahead and we're going to create the, um, the invoice page. Um, so here we're going to add a relation column uh, to be able to tie each invoice to a client because there can be one client with several invoices and uh, as we did uh, with the client database we're going to add the uh, fields we need so a checkbox to be able to know if the invoice was sent if it was paid uh, the date due and um, everything else we need. We're also going to add several um, World Up uh, fields because there's uh, several fields we need that are already available in the client database, for example, the email of the client or the address of the client. So rather than to type in uh, the address and everything else several times, we're just going to use um, a World Up column to have access to this information that will allow us to um, make the invoice. Now that we have all the fields we need for well, the invoice, uh, what we're going to do is create a template. Um, so, because what we need to add for each invoice, um, we need to add a description of the services, we need to add um, a rate, we need to add a price. And so we're going to do this by inserting a child database into um, each invoice. So rather than to have to add it every time manually, it's way easier to just create a template um, that will allow us to reuse it uh, every time we're going to want to create a new invoice. So this time the database we're going to uh, use is going to be a new line database, not a full page one. And um, so let's create it with um, the various information we need. And one thing I'm going to add here is that uh, I'm going to add a formula in the price, um, the price field so that rather than to always have to, well, recalculate the total price every time, I'm just going to uh, enter, um, well, I'm just going to enter a formula that will multiply the quantity or the number of hours by the hourly rate. And then this will allow me to um, automatically calculate the, the price of the of the service okay so this is done so i'm going to delete all the fields because i want the table to be empty by default so now that we we are done uh, let's create a um, sample invoice just to see if it works before i'm just going to delete all the um, the rows because i want the table to be empty uh, so let's do the same for the client database and then we're going to be able to create our test client and our test invoice. Okay. 
Okay, so one thing I'm going to do is that I'm going to add an invoice number. I forgot to do it uh, before. And uh, just one note here is the invoice number should be a text field uh, because if you choose a number field, um, formatting is kind of annoying. And since I want a specific formatting, I'm just going to make it a text field and it's going to be just way easier. Okay, so now that we're done with everything we need, let's... Um, well, create the integromat automation. Okay, so um, the first step of the scenario is going to um, be uh, the Notion Watch Database Item Module. So this is going to be um, this is going to allow us to watch uh, as soon as there is a new invoice. So to get the database ID, all we have to do is just to uh, well. Uh, get the ID in the URL and uh, this part is not shown on screen but um, you but you should uh, give Integromat access beforehand because if you don't you are not going to be able to well um, to have access to your databases if you want me to make a specific video of how to do that I will do it but the Integromat uh, documentation is pretty clear so you can check it out. Okay, so as you can see here, uh, this operation worked and now we have everything we, we, we have in database. So what we're going to have to do is to get the, the URL of the item we just added, so the, the invoice we added. So um, to do this, uh, we're going to have to use a module called a text parser uh, to be able to, well, do it automatically. Uh, so let's add the module to the scenario. So here what we're going to do is that we're going to use, uh, well, the URL of the database item we get from the previous module and we're going to extract the ID using a regular expression. And I'm also going to add a filter because I don't want to get all of the invoices. So the goal of this, the filter is that uh, I only want this um, automation to get triggered if the invoice send checkbox is uh, well checked and so that means that the, the is going to be equal to true uh, because I don't want this automation to run uh, all the time. I only want to uh, run this automation when I uh, check the checkbox and this filter is going to allow us to do that. So the next thing we need to do is we need to be able to read the page content of the, well, the invoice we created. So let's go ahead and use the list page content module. And the page ID we're going to use is going to be, well, the ID we just retrieved thanks to the text parser module. Okay, so as you can see, this is working because we have access to the content of the child database. So, as you can see, we have the title, invoice, um, and so now what we need to do is to be able to well, actually read uh, the content of the database. So we're going to add a new module, uh, and this module is going to be the get a database module using the page content ID we just got from the previous module. So let's go ahead and try this. And then uh, we need another module. Uh, when, once we get the child database, we need to be able to uh, read what's in the database because the get database module uh, will well, allow us to reach the database, but not to read the content. So we're going to add the search object module to be able to uh, have access to all of this. So let's run uh, the scenario again. And uh, let's see what we have. Okay, so there was a mistake. I think this is probably a problem with the, the access. I, I might have forgotten to give uh, 
to access to this specific database but as you can see it's okay because it's working so we have access to uh, the different parts of the invoice yes and as you can see on screen so we have the title of each one so each of the items and the invoice in is a well its own specific bundle and um this is not just for us to be able to um well create the invoice we are going to need to have all of this information in one uh, unique bundle so the way to do this in the trigger mat is to use the ray gregado bundle so let's go ahead and add it to our scenario okay so the particularity of the um the flow control modules is that you cannot run them on their own so uh to run this we need to add another module because it just won't work on its on um, on its own so i'm going to add the next module uh, which is going to be the google doc module we're going to use to generate our template so as you can see uh, I've, i have my template um uh, my invoice template sorry uh, already ready and now i'm going to create a document from this template using google doc um, so let me add the module so I'm going to have to, well, of course, choose the document I'm going to use as my template. So uh, my document is in there. Uh, then I'm going to have to, so the, to choose the location of the document. We don't have to do it. Um, and just before we do that, I'm just realizing that I forgot to uh, add a field in the database item i'm missing the company name so let's just go back and add it real quick uh, so this is going to be a roll, -up, a roll -up field again okay so now that we have what we need let's just um run the scenario again okay so um, let's see the results as you can see now we have um the three bundles in one big bundle which is in a uh, in array and so you have the main array and then the collection so let's fill the, the the information so first we're going to use the watch database item module to add information because the the company name and the company address is in this module uh, and then uh, we're going to use the array aggregator, aggregator sorry for uh, the information related to the invoice or the service uh, the price and um, yes the number of hours okay so i'm just adding everything uh, now so one thing um, that i'm going to add that it's not in notion it's just the invoice date uh, simply because um, of course the date of the invoice um, is the date when i send it so it's bound to change so it's just easier to just use a formula so i'm using the format date formula to um to add this um so let's add everything else the invoice to date okay and now we can move on to adding the information about the the invoice so here what we're going to do is that we're going to well uh, get the information uh in uh, the array gregator so here for the first uh well the first line what we're going to get is the first array as you can see uh, the number one is in brackets and then for the following uh, arrays what we're going to do is that we're going to use the second collection of the array so uh, to be able to get information from this we just have to change the, um, the number and this is how we can use um well this is how we can access information in the array because as you can see um on the screen right now we only have access to the information in the first uh, collection but uh so to be able to make sure that we're not going to get only the first um, collection but uh, we're going to get the following collections uh, we just have to change the numbers so, so this is a pretty tedious process so I'm just going to speed it up 
okay so this is done the last thing um we need to do is to add the total so i want to do this on screen uh, because what we're going to do here is that we're going to have to do uh well to add a formula that is going to do the sum uh to calculate the sum of uh well all the um, the values in um the array so by default there can only be up to five service line uh in the invoice that's why i'm going to use uh uh the array um, numbers one two three four and five even though in this specific invoice there's only three lines um i'm adding it in case for the other invoices there there is more um service um services that need to have the total so if you know how to use integral map you're probably wondering why i'm not using the numeric aggregator module and uh, this is just because uh, it's not compatible with the array aggregator module. So since, uh, as you can see on the screen, uh, the module search object and the array aggregator module are kind of like linked. So uh, even if I add a numeric aggregator after that, I won't be able to get the information um, from the module file because it's already linked to the, the array aggregator. So I'm just using this formula as a workaround. Okay, so now that I've added everything, uh, the last step, I mean, the almost the second to last step, is to, well, download documents, so make this a document. So to do this, I'm just using the download the document module by Google Doc, and I'm going to choose a format PDF. And so now the last, finally, the last, last step is to, well, send the email. Um, and to do this, we're just uh, going to use the module will send an email by Gmail. Um, the recipient is going to be uh, the email, so the contact uh, email that is in uh, module one. And uh, the subject, well, I'm just going to use, I think, the, the name of the invoice. So let's go ahead and find it. Um, so the name of the invoice, there it is. And then the content, let's write something, something like, Hi, name. Uh, what can I say? Um, let's say something simple. So I say, here is this month invoice. Okay, so this is just uh, for the sake of example. So it's okay. And finally, we can uh, add our PDF document as an attachment. So the attachment is going um, is coming from the module. Um, download the document and that's it so now that we have the this entire scenario so let's save it and let's run it okay so as you can see this is done let's go to uh, gmail uh to see if the the email was sent so okay perfect as you can see we have the invoice uh, which is well completed with the information we had in notion and it has been sent um to the, the email so what you can do is just copy the steps i've outlined in this video and uh this will allow you to save a lot of time especially if you send a lot of invoices and you have a lot of clients so uh, this is it for this video let me know if you want to see other integromat or notion content and uh, if this was helpful in any way, uh, please make sure to like, share, subscribe, and I will see you in the next video. Bye.